this. You guys know every single week we light the airwaves, we light the broadcasting world on fire with our Nez Nation Live live stream. We come here, we bring more humanness to this digitalness. We're trying to help each other to create something that is valuable and meaningful, helping you with your career and your business, helping you to communicate your message and impact your audience. That's the name of the game. And we have, I have so much fun sharing, participating. Let me, don't get this twisted, especially if you're new to this channel. Just because it's Nez Nation doesn't mean that I'm some sort of grand commandant or anything like that. Not even close. This is a collaboration. This is a community. Everybody that you see right now in the chat are just ingenious members, ingenious content creators, business owners, uh, um, very, very far along in their career, or maybe even just starting out like Dom, a young lion entrepreneur. I wish I had your kind of go gettedness when I was your age, Dom. I mean, I'm very, very impressed with that. Thank you, Ross. Hey, hey, Ross. Hey, Ross. Try not to go too cheap on me, will you? <laughs> Ross, you know, I expected 99. I thought that was going to say $99. 99 cents, Ross, for the love of God. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Ross. You know I love you. But um, it's recognition. And that's what it is. It's all the hard work is paying off. I don't care. I said this last night. I don't care how cool you are, but it's a beautiful thing to be recognized by your peers. It's a beautiful thing to be recognized in your industry, in your field. It it gives you something, you know, it just gives you that feeling like, wow, you know what? I'm a part of this thing. I'm not just somebody who's doing it to do it. Um, I'm a member. I am, you know, somebody who is recognized as somebody who's doing really well and somebody who's putting in the work, somebody who's putting in the time and the effort. And that's a beautiful thing. And I said this last night. And if you missed last night's live stream, I'll leave a card up here for the replay viewers. Um, but those of you in the live chat, go check out how to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. The raw, of the raw, of the raw of truth. Um, I didn't hold back at all last night. I probably put my foot in my mouth about a thousand times last night. You got to go check it out if you haven't checked it out already. And today, today, what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to be talking to you about five unbelievable concepts and tips that you can apply to your personal brand teaching you, informing you, educating you, and showing you how you can create content on social media that stands out. And this is going to be a killer show, just a killer broadcast. I can't wait to jump into this. And um, this is based on a great article called uh, by uh, Small Biz Daily, how to turn your social content um, into you know something that stands out from the noise. And I'm very, very appreciative. I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. But um, yeah, I just, it's, it's so awesome to, to be inducted into the partner program. I am super, super grateful. And it's all because of you, Nez Nation. It's all because of you, you guys, you guys are the reason that I'm here. You guys are the reason that I stay motivated. You guys are the reason that I create this. I've said this time and time again, that you know, anytime you guys leave comments in in the in below on these videos, or anytime you DM me or message me, um, and you have a video idea, you're like, "Hey, Nez, a problem that you're facing, a struggle, an issue, a concern." You ask any of any member of our wonderful community, and they'll tell you, "I'll probably create a video around it, and I'll give you credit." I think the um, the live stream that we did not that long ago about how not to burn out being a content creator, how to stay kind of balanced, if you will. Although I, can, I don't know if you can look at me and think balanced at all. <laughs> it's hard to equate Nez with balance. <laughs> and I'm not understating that. Um, but, um, you know, we we shared some great wisdom, some great knowledge, and drop in wisdom nuclear missiles every single day here on Nez Nation Live. And uh, it was all inspired by Cameron Ship, who's a fantastic member. Cameron, if you're watching this in the replay, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Luis is in the house. Thank you so much, Ross, for the congratulations. Dom says, what would you do if you could go back in time? I would have started understanding where the culture was headed a lot sooner. I mean, I, 
I probably would have put a little bit more action into creating more businesses rather than going back into the public sector, which is what I did. I mean, I started my mother and really my family's business when I was 13 years old. My mom runs a leather manufacturing company and um, I just got sick of it. You know, I was in my 20s and I was kind of like over it. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an author, which I am an author. I've got several books on Amazon and I still love communication. I love writing, but um, I wanted to go into teaching. So I went back into the public sector and, you know, if I knew what I knew now, I would have stayed with business, stayed with the private sector. I would have been probably a lot more happy and I would have probably been a lot more uh, financially secure <laughs> because they don't pay professors jack. That's just, that's just the, the, the way it is. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's, it's, it's, I'm not really a big believer in what ifs and hypotheticals. And I'm also a very, very big believer that everything that you've gone through is shaping you, molding you and creating who you are today. So even so-called bad experiences, which I've talked about this a lot on the channel, um, are not really bad experience because they are, they're molding you, they're teaching you, they're, they're helping you to see things in a different way. Okay. I'm not going to get mushy here, even though I have been prone to go mush. <laughs> Um, I'm going to keep it very, very real. Katie, good to see you. Shut the front door. <laughs> Katie's over on Instagram. Katie, come on over to YouTube. Go to youtube.com forward slash Professor Nez. We'd love to have you in the chat over here. Or you can stay there. I mean, I, I did that on purpose. I'm doing a little behind the scenes on Insta as well. Um, but yeah, I don't, you know, I don't even think I, even if I had the choice to go back in time, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's I'm not really good with hypotheticals. I counted up my change, Ross says. Don't spend it all at once. Yeah, you know, I was 99 cents short of getting a new gallbladder. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> you you saved my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Dom. All right. Thank you so much, Christian. Uh, incoming. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what social platforms do your students use? Okay, great question. So, so I, I'm happy to take questions. I want to get into the content. I'll answer your question right now, Ross. Um, that's a really good question, by the way. If you're just joining us or if you're watching this on the replay today, okay, in today's show, I'm going to be talking about, this is the, this is the title of the show, and I want to be, you know, very clear about what we're going to be talking about Creating content for social media, I'm going to be giving you five monster tips on how to grab attention online. I don't care how good your content is. I don't care if you are the next Steve Jobs or the next Gary Vaynerchuk. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you don't know how to grab attention, it means absolutely squadoosh. So I, I'm going to talk to you. If you're wondering, Dom, specifically for you, because I know sometimes... Dom and I have had some great conversations. Christian, I mean, I've had great conversations with everybody here in the chat. Luis, um, Katie's in the house. Good to see you, Katie. Thanks for dropping on Anne. Isn't, isn't this technology fantastic? I just love it. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking to you about how you can garner that attention because that's instrumental. It's been instrumental to my growth to 1000 subs here on YouTube. And I plan to get to 10 million. I said this last night. It was funny because Keith was on the show last night, Keith Brooks. And actually Keith said, <laughs> it was really funny because Keith said, hey man, onward to 10K. Or maybe he said onward to 100K. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to get to 100,000. But I'm even going way beyond that because you know I don't stop. This train don't stop for nobody. The Nez Nation train is going to go all the way. I'm, I'm going to wear a shirt that says 10 million like my man Casey before you know it, because I'm never going to stop. And I'm, I'm in it for the long, long term. I really am. I have no problem. I'm so grateful for the fact that I have a thousand subs, but when I get to 10 million, you know, oh my goodness, is that going to taste sweet? Because it, and I have nothing but patience and time for that because I know I'm going to get there because I know I'm good enough and I have so much to say. I have so much to help you with. Ain't nobody going to stop the Nez Nation train. Somebody give me a train emoji in the chat. Give me a train emoji if you're down for the Nez Nation train to 10 million. How many people are down for the Nez Nation train to 10 million? Hello. Flash in your pan. Good to see you, Flash. So, Ross, um, 
to answer your question, I actually like to do these kinds of uh, good to see you, Chris. I actually like to do the <laughs> <laughs> Christian, you are the Christian. You should come up with a, a video on how to communicate creatively through emojis. I'm telling you right now, that should be one of your videos. You're the man when it comes to creating emojis. Um, Ross, I want to answer your question. Which social platforms do your students use? I actually scan an interview. Hey, Fadiba, good to see you on IG. I actually scan an interview and, and do surveys with my students a lot because. Let's face it, those guys are really the barometer. They're the antenna for where the culture is headed. I mean, they're the, they're the compass if, the, if, if there ever was one. They're the future. And I find that most of them use YouTube and Instagram. I mean, I just did a post on Instagram recently on the top free apps ratings. And did anybody see that on, on my Instagram? Guess what number one and number two is? You might be surprised. A lot of people might think... Um, I'll give you a hint. A lot of you might think it's Facebook. It's just not. Christian says, dude, all I do is scroll and click on one at random. Well, don't tell people that. Tell them there's an art and science to it. <laughs> It'll sound more credible. <laughs> nice, Ross. Nice trade emoji. Chris is asking about LinkedIn. Okay, Chris, I'll get to your I'll get to your question too. Um I want to make sure that we actually get into the content and I might even answer some of these questions after the content, but uh, definitely Chris, I'm acknowledging you. Thank you so much. I, I will definitely help you with that and I'll, and I'll answer that. But so, so the first, the first ranking on the top apps in the app store was YouTube. YouTube is the number one app. Fadiba says, I need help to communication. You're damn right you do. No, <laughs> sorry, I had to go there. Fadiba, don't worry. By the way, Christian, I know you're going to leave the link in just a second here for me. If you're interested in getting real world, applicable, tangible skills to help you with your business and your career from an actual business communications professor, somebody who actually runs an online business, somebody who walks it, doesn't just talk it, because boy, can I talk it. I better walk it as well. Come and enroll. Fadiba, this is for you in my new launch of my new academy. We've already got a couple of unbelievable courses in there, beyondtheboxacademy.com. So if you're, if you're interested in learning how to create a personal brand, communication skills, modern communication, mindset, um, how to leverage content, how to create uh, presentations, speaking skills, you know, writing skills, you know, you everything really that you need in the real world when it comes to building a brand and building your career, you got to go to beyondtheboxacademy.com. We're going to be dropping content in there, new content every single month. And I'd love to see you guys in there. Enrollment is free. However, I'm going to be very transparent. The courses are not free, but enrollment in the actual academy is free. So I would love it if you'd enroll. I'd love it if you'd get in there. All the stuff that I bring to you in these live streams, in the courses, it's 10x, 100x what I bring here. And if you're thinking to yourself, how is that even fathomable? Oh, trust me, it's fathomable. I know that comes as a shock. So I find when I, just to answer Ross's question, and then, and then Chris, I want you to stick around and ask me that question again after I get into the content, because we got to get into the content. So number one, app that most of my students are using is Instagram, Snapchat. Instagram and Snapchat actually were kind of tied. And let me give you a little bit of the demographics for my students. It's mostly 18 to 22. I do have a few 25, 26 year olds, but I'm going to say 90% are 18 to 22. Snapchat and Instagram are pretty much neck and neck. And then surprisingly, YouTube's not even in the top five for most of my students. It was Twitter and WhatsApp, WhatsApp was used, messaging apps. So, but it's interesting that Instagram and Snapchat are like up there if they're not kind of tied for first, they're, they're right up there. And I think that that was really interesting and telling. Now in Gen Z, I find that, um, and, I, and I know there's statistics on this, I can't really bring it up um, and be 100% accurate on this, but I know that Gen Z which is 
below um, or maybe maybe I got that backwards, but I know that 13 to 18 year olds, YouTube is their number one go to app, then Instagram, then Snapchat. Facebook's not even in the top five for most of these uh, generations. So Facebook's draw and Facebook's appeal to younger audiences is slowly waning in the last couple of years. And I don't I don't know what they're going to have to do to up that and correct that because Mark's not a stupid uh, CEO. He's a smart dude. And he knows that the future always lies with the youth. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see what a smart move. And I said this in my Instagram post, what a smart move in buying Instagram. I mean, a huge, huge move by Facebook to, uh, to buy, uh, uh, to buy Instagram for what they did because they really got a great deal on that. Christian says, at least two of my students from this semester subscribe to my channel. That's awesome. That's fantastic. That's great. Ross says, quick follow-up, Nez, because that's what 99 cents gets you. <laughs> Do you recommend students use Insta for career professional branding? Um, definitely, but I always advocate because none of them put their hands up when I say LinkedIn. And you guys know how big I am on LinkedIn, how absolutely bullish I am about LinkedIn probably the most underutilized platform in the last two or three years, especially since they introduced native video over a year ago. LinkedIn is where I really conduct all of my business. Uh, you know, my, my, my agency, Professor Nez agency, I'm telling you right now, you need to be on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, go ahead and follow me. I just passed the 16,000 follower barrier milestone on LinkedIn. I'm very proud of that. Uh, I know Ross is huge on LinkedIn. Ross has got a great presence on LinkedIn. You should definitely connect with Ross on LinkedIn. And me, I'm, I'm Professor Nez everywhere. And I know Ross is Ross brand everywhere. Um, so so definitely, definitely, yeah, very good, Dom. So definitely, um, uh, yes, Instagram is is huge for branding. It's huge for your career. I truly believe these social platforms are better than a resume. Again, I'm going to share this stat, and then I got to get into the content. 93% of employers, the first place they go to find out who you are is Google. What do you think is going to come up? Well, your LinkedIn profile is usually the on the first page, if you, especially if you don't have a website. Hey, Arthur's in the house. Yes, Arthur, you made it. Good to see you. Okay, who's ready for the first tip on how to create social content that builds your brand and gets attention? Who's ready for the first tip? I want to see those emojis. Christian, I expect something spectacular from you. Who's ready for the first tip? Let me know in the emojis down below. So the first tip on how to turn your content into a memorable content strategy that grabs attention online, and this may seem, you know, for this highly sophisticated, intelligent, brilliant audience of the Nez Nation, which is predominantly of the Nez Nation family. And Katie and Fariba, you are honorary members of the Nez Nation family. Bing! I need to do some, like, I need some serious uh, sound effects for new members, new honorary members, even though Katie's not really a new honorary member. Definitely Flash is a member. Definitely Luis. Definitely Chris. Definitely uh, uh, Ross and Dom and um, Sethi. I know you're going to watch the replay, Sethi. And a whole slew of others, which I'm absolutely. <laughs> hey, Christian, was that random? Christian, the football? Katie, I like yours. Luis with the donuts. Nice. What in the world is that, Flash? Is that a cookie? <laughs> Chris, what in the world is that? Is that the clown face? Oh, my God. You guys are getting more and more creative every day. Okay. So the first tip out of the five on how you can get attention online by creating really high volume, high quality content on social media is you've got to create for your audience. We talked a little bit about this on previous live streams. You got to understand this is the biggest mistake, especially when I work with clients. They make their entire messaging. They make their entire branding. They make their content creation strategy all about describing what they are, who they are, what they can do, what makes them special. Here's a really important question that you need to ask yourself. This is a really, really important question because this has to do with two things, relatability and relevance, okay? 
And if you want to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, if you want to get to 16,000 followers on LinkedIn, if you want to create any brand that's worth listening to, watching, paying attention to, learning from, and if you don't have an audience, you got nothing, especially if, and I always leave this for last because it's to me something nobody should think about until they really get cooking with their brand, especially if you want to monetize. If you want to monetize, this is, this is fundamental. This is absolutely fundamental. Okay. So your audience needs to relate to your content. Okay. They need to relate either by experience or because it's something that they're interested in. Okay. So here's the question that you need to ask yourself to put that first tip in context. Here's the, everybody should, everybody, there's so many great content creators in the chat right now. And really, this has a lot to do with Aristotle, right? This has a lot to do with the rhetorical situation. Who are you as an author? We're all authors, y'all. Even if you're just, if, you, if you've never written a word in your life, just by you eating, sleeping, breathing, walking, being a human being, you're communicating some kind of message. It may not always be verbal. And I forget what the stat is, but nonverbal communication, even what you wear sends a message. Even the way that you look sends a message. You need to ask yourself this question. Why would anybody want to check out this content? Why would anybody want to engage with this content? I go directly to my audience as I have with you guys, Nez Nation. I go directly to you guys. Dan Norton's in the house. Good to see you, Dan. Fantastic. All right, Dan. Dan is, is a, a, a new member of Nez Nation. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that, uh, that, that I need, I need some cool sound effect for new honorary members of the Nez Nation family. Welcome Dan Norton. It's so nice to have you with us. Um, are emojis important? Yes. Emojis are very important. As a matter of fact, you're kidding Arthur, but emojis are important. Ask yourself this question. Why in the world should I check out this dude's live stream? Why should I check out this blog post? Why should I check out this podcast? Why would anybody want to read this, hear this, smell this, smell this? I don't know. Smell. <laughs> anybody create um, uh, smell sensory content? <laughs> anybody have a scratch and sniff podcast? <laughs> um, you've got to ask yourself that question. So if you're not, I, I, I've said this many, many times, and it's actually one of the key components to me being successful in my business, me being successful in my work. I cater to my audience 24-8. I cater to my audience. Some of you might be thinking like, well, Nez, you say this all the time that you're here to serve, that you're born to serve. It sounds like you're like a slave to your audience. It sounds like you're not. I thought the whole point of having a business, I thought the whole point of having a brand was freedom, was autonomy. Yeah, but you're getting it all twisted. You're, 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 you do have the freedom. You do have autonomy. You get to create whatever you want to create. But if you're, if you're just doing it for yourself, what's the point? You don't need to put it out there. If you're just doing it for yourself and you're not worried about building an audience, you're not worried about building a brand. You can't build, an, you can't build a brand. You can't build a platform. You can't build a podcast. You can't build a live stream show. You can't build a business without an audience, without customers, without people, without human beings. So you've got to cater. <laughs> Katie says, scratch and sniff would be golden for my baking. Oh my God. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Virtual reality. Get some developers on this. Any developers in the chat are watching this on the replay. Virtual reality, scratch and sniff for a cooking show, live stream podcast. Hello. I just solved your entire personal branding career roadmap for you right there, Katie. You're welcome. I think that deserves a super chat. By the way, <laughs> by the way, shameless plug, super chats, super chats. <laughs> oh my God. I swear to God, I'm not on anything. I'm really not. I don't know where this is coming from. Probably lack of sleep. My daughter's been sick. And uh, I'm seriously lacking some sleep. So you're getting Nez in rare form. Luis, you're not leaving me, are you? Oh, Luis, Luis, stay with us. Stay with us, Luis. That's okay. I to I'm totally kidding. I totally understand. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. That, that would mean the world to me. Thank you. Um, so so you, you your audience, 
you you got to first of all you got to understand who your audience is. Without a loyal audience, you don't have anything for your business. You don't have anything for your brand. You've got nothing. Okay? And this takes time. Everybody, this takes time. And you know, I know you've heard this before or maybe you haven't. I'm going to go ahead and say it. The riches are in the niches. You know, I truly believe that finding something unique, especially a unique audience, I'm going to tell you right now who my ICA is, otherwise known as an ideal customer avatar. I'll tell you who Nezes is with my online business, which is really my executive career coaching and LinkedIn consulting. Um, besides my branding and my, my speaking gigs that I do for corporations and businesses, um, company really my, my ideal customer avatar is somebody who – Really, you know, actually military people who are, who have military veterans or people who've been in the military, um, who are mostly in the technological field, maybe software development, cybersecurity, information technology, and are between the ages of 33 and 55. Those are my, that's my ideal, my ICA, my ideal customer avatar. Now, when it comes to building an audience on social, okay. When it comes to building an audience on social, I still niche down and I still try to be as very specific as I can to people who want to grow, who want to grow something that's leverageable for their career and their business, who want to stand out, who want to create an online presence and brand. Okay, that's kind of a general overview. But I, I know specifically the kinds of people who aren't really that well acclimated or skilled at communicating their value proposition. And that's usually people who are in the accounting field, the tech field, um, people who maybe um, have not had a lot of experience with communications and writing. Those are my, that's my audience. And, and really anybody who just, who just loves this charismatic, lovable fellow and this beautiful face. I mean, for the love of God, how could you not love me? <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of, I'm going to get a lot of trolls now for that comment. <laughs> so you've got to create for your audience. Look at that flash. Thank you, Flash, for the $2 super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, you will always be a Flash, and you'll always see a Flash in your pan. By the way, Flash in Your Pan has a wonderful channel. He does, I mean, I think it's weekly live streams, isn't it, Flash? I try to catch, catch them as much as I can, but I really, really appreciate it, Flash. Thank you so much. Um, and everybody go follow Flash. He's got some wonderful content, and he is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Ha! Katie, you're enjoying yourself, aren't you, Katie? Aren't you glad you came over here, Katie? Katie's having a blast. So who's ready for number two? Number one is really, really important. you got to create thinking about it's just it's customer service. Ross, back me up on this. It's customer service, y'all. How are you going to run a business if you don't understand the basic fundamentals of customer service? You got to make that customer, that user feel engaged, feel like you created this just for them. Go all in on the people. Go all in on your customers, your audience. Serve, cater them, and I promise you, your brand will skyrocket. Okay, your brand will go through the roof. <laughs> Arthur says, what about us old fogey artists over 55? Now, Thank you. Thank you, Flash, every Tuesday night. Now, <laughs> more fun than the laundry I'm folding. You know, being compared to um, folding laundry is a new one here for Professor Nez, but I'll take that compliment, I think. Being more fun than folding laundry. That almost sounds sarcastic, but I know you, Katie. You're not being sarcastic. <laughs> um, Arthur, now, th the reason why I say that it's important to dial in who your audience is doesn't mean that you're excluding people who are over 55 or under 33 or people who are not in tech or not in development or not, you know, maybe well acclimated to communications. You're still going to reach everybody, but by honing in, it gives you that focus by honing in and really, uh, it's such an overabused word, but niching down, we're going to niche down. It's um, it, it, it allows you to have that sort of tunnel vision and it gives you something of a of a destination. It's almost like um, it's almost like um, you know, when you turn on your Google Maps or MapQuest or whatever, 
you know, there's so many, there's different ways of getting there, but it's not, you got to pick one to get there, right? You got to have that destination in mind. And that just helps you to really stay on point. That's it. Simple as that. I like to simplify things, which is why every single live stream here, you don't need an encyclopedia. You don't need to, well, gosh, I got to go do for, it's actionable. It's practical. You can use it today. You can dig into it today. Not five years from now, not tomorrow, not next week, not maybe when you graduate, not maybe after you retire, right now, today. There is an art and science to simplicity. I'm a big proponent of that, a huge proponent of that. Who's ready for number two? I want to see some fancy schmancy uh, uh, emojis. Yes, Ross, nice bullseye, Ross. Katie says, going all in is exactly what our church has done. As we launch our vision for the future, new building, growth, rebranding, etc. Katie, you are in fuego. If you don't know what in fuego means, it means you're on foya. If you don't know what foya means, it means you're lighting it up, girl. And I'm so happy. Katie is one of uh, the many now that are becoming, we're growing, y'all. Nez Nation is growing. A community of bringing more humanness to this digitalness coming together to inspire one another, helping each other discover our purpose, communicate our message, and impact our audience. Dan says, Ross, I just learned from Todd that you're NJ-based. Yes, very good. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, who's ready for number two? Who's ready for number two? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see those emojis. <laughs> I love it. So we talked about knowing your audience. We talked about catering to your audience. Number two tip for creating social content that will grab attention for your personal brand is you have to think about solving a problem. You got to think about solving a problem. How are you going to stand out from the millions, trillions, and billions pieces of content, content creators, businesses, brands, career enthusiasts out there creating every single day? I mean, What's the stat? The stat is something like 400, 400 million hours of YouTube videos downloaded per second or uploaded, something crazy like that. It's insanity. It's just insanity. Um, you have to solve a unique problem. As soon as you identify who your ICA is, your ideal customer avatar, as soon as you identify who it is, that really needs what you can offer the most as a business, as a brand, as somebody. Even I tell this to my, you know, career clients. Look, don't don't go into the interview. This is really a good one right here. This is sort of a bonus tip. Don't go into the interview thinking that I got to tell them everything about me. Don't. I kind of call it the Kennedy principle. Ask not what the company can do for you, but what you can do for the company. The reason they're looking at you, the reason they're interviewing you is not because they're so impressed with your dreams and your passion and your lofty ideals. No, it's because they have a headache and you need to solve that headache. They've got a problem and you need to solve that problem. So you got to understand what your audience's pain points are. What are their concerns? What are their problems? What are they facing in their life? Literally, if you watch the way that I do it every single day, Nez Nation, I'm constantly tapping into my audience. I'm constantly questioning them, probing them, investigating them. Inte well, interrogating them sounds a little bit aggressive. But I'm constantly, basically, I'm, I'm in communion with my audience. I'm trying to find out what is it that's going on in your life that's an impediment, that's a, fi you know, a firewall that's preventing you from achieving whatever it, is, whatever it is you want to achieve. And then I create content around that. Because as my man, Dale Carnegie said in his amazing book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you. You're not a special snowflake. I'm so sorry to break this to you. You're not a special snowflake. I thought I was a special snowflake forever. Can you blame me? <laughs> I don't mean that in a cold salmon kind of way. I mean, obviously you're special and you're, you're awesome. You're unique. You're a human being. You're an individual. You've got beautiful aspirations and beautiful communications and things that you want to contribute, but nobody knows that yet. Nobody cares yet. You got to make them care, right? So a great way to start getting some traction with your content, grabbing attention is if you create content whether it's a blog, a live stream, a video, a podcast, whatever visual content it is, 
it solves a problem for that unique audience. And it does it in a way that just has your audience going, wow, that was really, really cool. That helped me a lot. I'm going to subscribe to that dude's channel. I'm going to check out his content. I'm going to find out what else he does. Holy macadamia nut. I can't tell you how many speaking gigs I have contracted just based on people saying, wow, like your video on anxiety, your video on personal branding, your video on content marketing, your video on online business, change the way I look at things. Um, can you come teach my sales team? Can you come coach my staff, my personnel? Can you come and you know, speak at this conference that we're holding? It's, it's amazing. And that's dollar dollar bills, y'all. Again, I don't want to make that the focus. I really don't want to make that the focus. That should be the least of your focuses, especially when you're just starting out. Okay. Especially when you're starting out. Otherwise, you're going to come across very salesy and very infomercially. But you have got to solve a unique problem. Every business solves a problem. The reason we buy products is because they solve a problem. Why do we buy deodorant? Why do we buy a vacuum cleaner? Why do we buy a car? We buy, why do we buy Windex? Because they solve problems, not because they're cute and they have dreams and they're all special snowflakes. We're all special snowflakes. Look at us. Katie says, this is golden today. I have several grants to write before the year's end. You just help me figure out how to approach them. Present the problem. Tell them how they can be part of the solution. That's exactly right, Katie. But also, by by because I'm your personal brand coach, by bolstering your thought leadership, you posit yourself as the expert solving their problem. And actually, by you solving the problem, by you creating that insanely valuable content or, or solution, you're going to be deemed, you're going to be perceived as the thought leader. You're going to be perceived as an influencer. You're going to be perceived as the expert, right? Which leads to so many other opportunities, not just in business, y'all. Building a personal brand is not just relegated to being an online uh, business owner, whether it's online or brick and mortar. Your career, your career, recruiters, employers, HR directors, where are they going to find out about you? Here's, here's a real cool thing because I practice what I preach. I tell all my prospective clients, and most of my clients come from LinkedIn, I get a few to my website just from SEO and search. Um, I mean, not more than a few, obviously. I mean, I can't just get everything from LinkedIn. I tell all my prospective clients this. You're going to love this, Katie. You ready for this? I tell all my prospective clients this. I say, look, I know you got like five or six proposals. I know you've done some due diligence because you're a smart, sophisticated individual because I my services are not cheap. Okay. When I do one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting or keynote speaking, I'm not cheap. I know my worth. So the people that usually are looking to hire me have done their due diligence. They've done their research. I tell them all the same thing. I go, Google me, just Google Professor Nez and Google the rest of those dudes and dudettes and see what you find. Just Google me and compare who has a stronger presence. You should pick that individual. Why Nez? Why does it matter to have a stronger presence? Because in the 21st century zeitgeist, in this landscape, in this marketplace, in this culture, in the way that we eat, sleep, and breathe, and communicate, the internet is everything. Having a personal brand is everything. This is the way that we communicate. This is the way commerce, it's the reason why Amazon owns the world. That's why Amazon just passed the trillion dollar valuation recently. And so did Apple. So it's insane. It's the reason why my favorite toy company, Toys R Us, went out of business. They liquidated. You got to understand the culture. You got to understand where everything is going. If you don't understand this, if you don't heed this, I beseech you, Nez Nation. This is absolutely huge. The next time you get a prospective client, okay, after taking all this tutelage and putting it to action, which is funny because if you're ready for the next tip, it may sound familiar. I don't know where Groucho Marx came from, but he just did. <sighs> Tell them to Google you. Tell them to Google your competitors. Tell them to Google your competitors versus you. See who has a stronger online. But when you Google Professor Nez, you get a crap ton of content. You go to my, my website, professornez.com forward slash live streams. You're going to see mountains of content. It's an entire online university. It's crazy because it's all free. You can learn everything you need to know pretty much, right? 
Who's ready for number three? Let me know if you're ready for number three. Number one was cater to your audience. Number two was you need to solve a unique problem. Who's ready for the number three tip on how to create social media content that grabs attention and makes you stand out online? Dan says, great timing for me to hear these tips. This week, I'm setting up a funnel, free training, and package of videos I'm selling to local businesses. Oh, cool. Has helped me strategize. Very nice, Dan. Congratulations, man. That means a lot to me. Katie says, it matters because it puts your name on the tip of the memory. Yes. Yes. Very, very true. That's rad. That's killer. Okay. <laughs> Arthur, nice. <laughs> Katie with the bomb. And <laughs> look at Launchpad. Some strange looking clock. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice, Christian. Thank you. I take it you're ready for number three. I take it you're ready for number three. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. By the way, if you want to ask any questions, Chris, I hope you're still here. If you want to ask any questions, uh, please uh, save them for now. I'm going to get to questions at the end. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would love to answer any questions or concerns that you have and please, please, please make sure you, um, make sure you write them down and put them in the chat so I can check them out. Okay, guys. Okay. Number, number three, number three. So we talked about your audience. Number one, we talked about solving a problem. This is pretty basic, but it's something that every one of my clients keep overseeing. And I'm not just saying every one of my clients, I'm just saying most people, um, you have to make your content. Now that you've understood who they are and you've identified, you know, exactly what types of problems they have, if you want to create content that is going to engage your audience and grab attention and build you that personal brand that's going to be something that you can leverage for opportunities, you have to create content that's actionable. I cannot tell you. these. Most of these content creators that I see, it really bums me out. They're just these general, vague, sort of like, oh yeah, um, you know, you should build a brand because it's important. So go online and start building. What? What does that mean? Building a brand is important because you need to build a brand in order to stand out. Okay, well, how do I stand out? What do you mean by that? You've got to have actionable content. It has to be comprehensive. It has to lead your audience to actionable steps. In my writing classes, my business communication classes, I mean, it's the number one thing I talk about. Some of my students are on my YouTube channel. Some of you might even be in the chat. Please comment and back me up on this. I tell my students all the time, I don't care about your grade. If you do the work and you put in all the effort, you're going to get the grade you deserve. What I care about is that you take these learnings, you take these pointings and teachings beyond the box, beyond the jail cell, I sometimes call, of this thing called the classroom. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. Hence the title of my online academy, beyondtheboxacademy.com. Taking these learnings and these teachings beyond the box, it needs to apply to your life. Create in-depth informative, on point, actionable content. That's more powerful. Address your audience's problems. Give them the best solutions, which can be executed on a practical level, not in some vague, nebulous level. It has to be actionable, right? So you, you, you really need to make sure that you're creating content that leads to something more tangible than just these vagaries. I'm so sick and tired of vagaries. That's not going to get your personal brand anywhere because people are going to recognize even some of these podcast influencers. I, I, I listen to some of these podcasts and they have a real snappy, catchy title, right? Most of it's just clickbait though. And it drives me nuts. Thank you so much, Christian, for the link. Yes, Katie says, actionable content isn't enough. You also have to build your brand integrity. I like that. But that's one, absolutely, Katie. But how do you build your integrity? I would posit that question to you. I mean, you can't just say, here I am. I mean, I have integrity. You build your integrity by actions, not words, correct? At least I think so. So um, how do you create that integrity? How do you create that authority? Is you help people, people, audience, number one, solve a problem, number two, 
and make sure that it's something tangible. It's something real. You know, I was going to say, sometimes I listen to these podcasts. It's like how to make money fast in 2018, how to go from zero to hundred K in your business in 2018 in less than six months. I'm like, whoa, well, that sounds pretty amazing. And I click on it and it's like, you got to understand, you got to have a dream. You got to have a vision. And having a vision is something beautiful because you are a special snowflake and special snowflakes always survive. Holy macadamia nut. Are you kidding me? I got to have a vision. That's why I clicked on your on your uh, title, holy macadamia nut. Get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Katie says, Arthur, are you asking me that? Are you linked to your website? Or am I linked to my website? Yes, I am. I don't know if you're asking me that. Katie says, build it by doing and sharing what you're doing. Yes, that's exactly right. But, but, but again, I would say, Katie, and I love you to death, and I'm only saying this to be helpful. Please take this for the... <laughs> Nice, Chris. Special snowflake emoji time, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time. <laughs> I would say, Katie. <laughs> Dan, nice, Dan. Thank you. I would say, Katie, by, by doing and sharing what? Don't, don't do and share special snowflake content. I should That should be a hashtag, special snowflake content, which is vague, nebulous, and is not actionable. Who's ready for number four? I want to know who's ready for number four. Who's ready for number four? Who is ready for number four? Just to kind of review, number one is cater to your audience. Number two, solve a unique problem. Number three, create content that is actionable for your audience that leads them to taking steps that are on point, poignant, and actionable. Number four, who's ready for number four? <laughs> We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do some merch, man. I'm telling you, the Nez Nation shirts are coming, the Holy Macadamia Nut shirts are coming, and maybe even hashtag Special Snowflake content hashtag is coming soon too. <laughs> Beyond the special, <laughs> damn! Oh my God, who knew there were so many comedians in the Nez Nation family? I love it. <laughs> Beyond the Special Snowflake Academy, that is what. Ah, oh, Dan, where were you? I needed you, Dan. That's a title. Now that's a catchy title for an academy. Holy mackerel. I love it. <laughs> Launchpad, Christian. <laughs> that is a beautiful title, Dan. Okay, number four. Arthur says, more than just one sentence content in your comments. One and two word comments go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love that. You can always tell when somebody's not engaging with kind of their their sort of true interest or authenticity. And uh, it's kind of like I use this in my my classes as well. When somebody sends you the letter K as a text message, just the letter K, and especially after you've written something that you actually put some thought into, it always stings, doesn't it? It's like K, just the letter K. And you're like, dude, I just, we're, you know, if my wife sends me the letter K, especially after I've sent her a nice, like endearing, like text usually means I'm in trouble. K basically is a euphemism for, or another way of saying whatever, you know, just whatever. I don't like that. Katie says, example, we feed over 300 families weekly. We share it on social media. Often we invite corporate volunteers to join us. Wow. The results in word of mouth sharing. Very nice. Oh yeah. Arthur, you're going to get a shirt. Everyone, everybody in the chat is going to get a shirt for sure at least specifically a Nez Nation shirt. But uh, yes, doesn't it, Katie? It drives me up the wall. It drives me bonkers. It's But it's so powerful, right? The power of communication. Something I advocate every single time I'm in front of my audience. Your words are powerful. There's a reason why they say the pen is mightier than the sword. This dude right here is mightier than both. Use your sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt is a crock of poop emoji. It's a crock of crap. I have to be, you know, advertiser friendly now that I'm a part of the partner program. Actually, I have no problem with that anyway. I have kids. Um, your words are powerful. Wield them wisely. Wield your words wisely. Okay. So number four is to educate and inspire with your content. Who's a better example than this dude? <laughs> 
So, you know, um, if you're a subject matter expert, if you're somebody who's creating a brand, you want to create content that's engaging, that's going to grab attention, then educating your audience with knowledge and giving them solutions will make your content attractive and people will search for it and they'll want to go after it. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I say this all the time. I say, if you try to teach me something, if you try to like, you know, finger wag your, your, and, and go like this and say, you need to teach me, you need to teach, or you need to learn this. You need to learn this. Usually I recoil from that. I don't like that. Like, Hey, I'm going to teach you something. I just don't like it. Even if it's done gently, but Instagram, we're about to go off the air really quickly. If you want to come on over, go to professornez.com. I'm sorry. Yeah. Professornez.com forward slash live streams or go to youtube.com forward slash Professor Nez. If you try to teach me something more often than not, I'm apt to kind of go like this and just recoil. But if you inspire me, Nez Nation, I'm a slave to you for life. I actually don't even believe that you can teach anybody anything. I think if you try to teach people something, what usually happens is it goes in one ear and out the other. <whistles> Gone. But if you inspire me, I'm a slave for life. There's just something about it. Inspiration is the sustenance to a creator's life. The sustenance to, and you have to be creative to create a personal brand. You have to be creative to create content that stands out and grabs attention on social media. You have to create content that is unique. It's individualized. It's customized. It's yours and yours alone. So don't just get on there and create content. So you've got this audience, you understand their problem, you're creating actionable steps. This is really about delivery. This is really about delivery, educate and inspire. Don't just get on there and go monotone. Here's five steps on how to create actionable content on social media. Number one, let's look at the board. Number two, they're gone. <laughs> Your audience is gone. Hasta la pasta. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Now, I, I definitely don't think that you should fake it till you make it. I definitely don't think that you should be affectatious. I definitely don't believe that you should try to put on some kind of an act. Um, people can smell that cooking. They can tell. Oh my God, this guy's just, this guy's just putting on an act, or she's just putting on a complete act. That's not her real personality. Personal brand. Personal brand. Put a face to it. Put something unique to it. Be raw. Be real. Be authentic. I'm not saying don't try to create, you know, a presentation or create content that, you know, is professional and you've honed in on it. You've polished it. You've revised it, of course. But really, really make sure that, you know, it's it's delivered in a sense that is really not you're not holding back. You see me when I do my live streams. If you meet me in real life, you ask anybody here who's met me in real life, Ross is definitely one of them. And I'm going to see Ross at uh, Vid Summit again. Um, a couple other people in the chat I've met in real life. It's, it's, I'm the same dude. I mean, it's me because I don't know how to fake it till you make it. Or I don't know how to put on, I don't, I'm enough of an act to put on an act for crying out loud. My personality is an act naturally. It's an insane act if you really want to know the truth. <laughs> K is a troll comment. Nice, Chris. Chris with the poop emojis. Dan, you're going to be at VidSummit? Ooh, I might I might need to uh, call upon you for some assistance, Dan, if you're a volunteer. That's nice. Awesome. I haven't exactly got my pass yet, but I've got some strategies for that. Um. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Nice, Ross. Might as well have Alexa read a blog post. Katie says, the pen is so mighty because written words don't show facial expressions. You can hear the sincerity in a voice when just reading a text blog, etc. I mean, I'm going to tell you exactly what I do with my clients and my prospective clients. And I actually just closed two high tickets today, which I'm probably, probably why I'm in such a buoyant mood. Um, and I'm very, very excited about some pretty high ticket offers I just closed today. Um, yes, I work on a Sunday. You best believe that. I work 24-8. You guys know that. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing Dan for sure and Ross always. Um, you know, I use this video. I use it as a CRM tool, which I send to all my prospective clients. Just kind of 
me going through my entire process. And it's just a way to three dimensionalize me. I think video is the ultimate form of communication, which is why I'm going to vid summit two years in a row. I don't really, I'm not a conference dude. I'm not one of those festival dudes. I'm just not. But when I go to a conference, it means I know where everything's headed. I know where the culture's shifting. I know where communications is going. I know where it's best for me to benefit from learning and listening and helping to amplify who I am and what I'm all about, my brand. And that's a conference that I know for creators is really, really big. Um, and I can't tell you how many clients, Katie, I can't tell you how many clients in this nation I've gotten just from people saying, my God, I saw, you know, I got, I got to see you. I got to hear you. I got to feel you, your energy, your insincerity. Like uh, it just shines through the camera and it means the world to me. I'm not trying to brag here or be narcissistic. I'm not, I'm trying to show you actionable steps, right? What you can do. Actually, if anybody here in the chat has a, has a business, a client service business, a, a, any kind of coaching business, consulting business, I would highly recommend that if you don't have videos on your website, if you don't create some kind of content that three-dimensionalizes you, I mean, predominantly video, I'd say you're missing out. It's a great way for clients, customers um, to get a real taste of who you are. That's awesome, Dan. That is great. <laughs> Chris, 25-8. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, where are we? Are we on the last one? Number five. Number five to keep you alive, Nez Nation. Before I get to number five, I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the super chats, Christian. Thank you so much for the super chat, Luis. It really, really means a lot to me. I just want to say I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. I love this. We're here every single Sunday. Katie, write this down on your laundry folding calendar. We're here every single Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern time, dropping wisdom atomic missiles on you, helping you to build your brand, helping you to discover your purpose, communicate your message, impact your audience so that you can leverage that for your career and business. Every Sunday, every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, I want to see you guys here. Make sure you click that subscribe button, hit that like button, make sure that you click on the notification bell so that you get that little cool notification every time I go live. <gasps> so you go, oh, Nez is live. I got to go check out Nez because I'm going to learn a thing or two and I'm going to be entertained too. We have fun in this live stream. It's a live stream party, y'all. You guys know how I do. You guys know how I do. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah, it's a swell bunch of folks. You can say that. <laughs> it's definitely Dan. Dan, thank you. <laughs> Nez party. That's right. We have a Nez party. Okay, so number five. And before I go to number five, let me just do a quick wrap up. Number one was cater to your audience. Number two. Oh, by the way, I didn't ask. Who's ready for number five? Do I see those emojis? I know Dan is. I want to see some emojis. Who's ready for number five? I want to see some unique creative emojis in the chat. Who's ready for the last tip? before I got to get out of here. Who's ready for number five to keep you alive? That's right. That's right. And before I get into number five, let me just review. Number one was identify, okay, who is your audience? Cater to your audience. Find a unique problem that you can solve for them. Create content that actually gives them something tangible actionable, and then deliver it in a way that's inspirational, that's informative. And number five, number five is identify with your audience. Yeah, identify. One of the things that's really interesting about creating a platform and creating a brand is creating trust. And you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, Katie, and so did a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys in the chat. Um, if you if you if you want to increase your trust, okay, you want to increase your credibility. Um, identifying with your audience is a really really big deal. So, you know, sharing your journey with your audience and sharing your struggles, sharing 
the fact that you can relate to them and you identify with your audience. You understand what they're going through and you're here to help them. You're here to coach them. You're here to inspire them. You're here to educate them. And you're personable and you're genuine and you share how you overcame. Okay. You see how I'm, uh, what, what's going on here? This is very, very meta. Share how you overcame the problems that they're experiencing right now currently. That is some serious, I mean, really that's pathos. That's what Aristotle called pathos. It's an emotional appeal. It's an emotional connection to your audience. Um, if you want to scale your business, if you want to scale your career, I mean, the first thing you need to do is focus on how to engage your audience with authoritative, substantive, resourceful content. And I guarantee you, if you follow these five tips, I mean, the reason I'm doing this live stream today specifically is these were the mistakes I was making when I first started out. A lot of these things I was not doing. I was just sort of putting stuff out there. I wasn't really understanding who my audience was. I wasn't really catering to my audience. I had the reverse, the antithesis mindset of, I'm just going to talk about me. Screw you, audience. I'm just going to talk about me. I mean, I didn't really say screw you, but I, I wasn't really understanding. Okay, there is a definite way to serve, and it really tapped into my educational system. It tapped into my you know, my customer service, my management skills, and my operation skills when I ran a business, helped my family run their business. So th th all this stuff seemed very relevant to me. And this is when I, uh, and again, these were mistakes I made when I entered this social media game. Um, I was, I, I almost really flippantly described it as like, oh yeah, social media, is, it's just for kids and kicks and giggles. This is an unbelievable, it's really modern. It's, this is it. This is the way that we communicate today. It's the way that most of us engage with each other. It's the way that most of us um, deliver our promise to our customers, to our audience, to our clients. It's, it's just the way. This is the way that we do business. This is the way that we create our personal brand. So, you know, how do you identify with your audience is you got to, you got to be complete. Hey, hey, look at that. Ross. Ross is really breaking. You're breaking. Did you just crack open your piggy bank? <laughs> Ross, Ross just cracked open his piggy bank. I love it. Is that all you had left Ross in there? <laughs> Thank you, sir. I really, really appreciate live stream universe. That is the great Ross brand who is an unbelievable content creator. Specifically, I want to say, Ross, I'm loving what you're doing with Alexa flash briefings and your podcast and your live stream shows on Facebook, live stream deals. Uh, everybody needs to go check out Ross. Um, specifically, I think his podcast just rocks. Uh, brand on broadcasting, live stream deals, and his live stream show, uh, live stream universe on Facebook is just killer. Um, so definitely go check out Ross. I really appreciate the super chat, Ross. Ross does a great job of identifying with his readers. Ross does a great job of really... Um, encapsulating all of these tips, as well as, you know, do most people here in the chat, everybody here in the chat is extremely, extremely thoughtful, resourceful. I mean, this is what I love about coming here every Sunday. Who's Professor Nez? I'm just a part of this conversation. Most of the people in this chat know as much as I do, if not more. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, if you're watching this on the replay, you need to come be here on the live chat. All the more reason because you really get that immediate response, immediate connection with your fellow peers and colleagues. So thank you, Ross. I really appreciate that. <laughs> five, 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 five. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Arthur says, yeah. Dan says, thank you. Okay, Katie, we found that by building relationships with people we serve builds the trust. Once that trust is built, we can speak into someone's life and hopefully help them through their life challenges. Yes, absolutely. Chris, I'm going to get to your question. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to get to your question in just a second. So I just want to say, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're here every single Sunday, <laughs> every single Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. We would love to see you guys here. I'm going to keep bringing it. The Nez Nation train ain't going to stop till we get to 10 million, and I'm still not going to stop. I'm going to get to 100 million. We're going to go all the way to the top, you and me, Nez Nation, all the way. We're going to pretty soon have one of those Nimanati streams, having 150 concurrent viewers or something like that. It's going to get crazy up in here. So all you early adopters of Nez Nation Live, you're the OGs. You're the originals. 
And I'm going to get you guys all some merch too, to go with it. Um, thank you so much, Ross. That means a lot to me. Um, and make sure that you go to professornez.com forward slash live streams to check out the replay. And as always, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Chris, Chris, I'm going to get to your question. On a LinkedIn profile, what's the best headline strategy? Yours show things you do separated by pipes. Is this the best strategy or state positions like CEO, who you work for, et cetera? Definitely don't state who you work for, Chris, because who you work for is already located to the right of your headline on your LinkedIn profile. So um, if you watch this interview I did with Dale, the self-publishing expert, Dale Roberts, I audited his entire LinkedIn page. And definitely for a headline, you want to try to keyword optimize it. Hence, if you go to my page and you see all those different words separated by pipes, those are keyword phrases that I want to come up on search. And also, also, it's a great way to diversify your different skill sets. So I have personal branding coach. I've got keynote speaker. I've got career coach. I've got resume writer. I've got content creator, podcast host. It's a great way to diversify. Putting, stating your employer does nothing. You're, why would you advertise your employer? Makes no sense at all. I mean, they already can see through your experience, even up on the header, your experience, especially your most recent one, is right there. And also, they can scroll down and figure out who you work for. So don't, it's really valuable real estate, your headline. Don't put your employer there. CEO is fine. You can put chief executive officer or founder, but um, diversify that with keyword optimized phrases. Okay. And you can come to my page for examples. Also, if you go to beyondtheboxacademy.com, we're actually going to be creating a flagship course on job search in the digital age with a lot of LinkedIn profile tutorials in there. My personal branding flagship course has some LinkedIn tutorial in there that's really valuable, actually. Um, Chris, as a matter of fact, um, I know for a fact that my personal branding course in beyondtheboxacademy.com, which I'll give you a discount code, just DM me, I'll give you a discount code for, for the personal branding course. There is a whole like 40 minute section, maybe hour section just on LinkedIn. And I think you'd get a lot of value out of that. Never mind, it's a, over a three and a half hour course of videos, modules, tutorials, slides. It's in, my best course yet is my personal branding flagship course. Thank you so much, Christian, for the mention. I really appreciate it. Um, so I would highly recommend that for you, Chris, and anybody who's interested. Again, enrollment is free into Beyond the Box Academy. Christian's got the link down there. My number one mod, I really appreciate it down there. And I appreciate you, Nez Nation. So just to kind of wrap up one last time, all five tips on how you can create content for social media that builds your brand and grabs attention. Number one, cater to your audience. Figure out who your audience is specifically and cater to them. Solve a unique problem, number two. Number three, create content that's actionable, that actually gives them some kind of a practical step-by-step. -step. Um, number four is educate and inspire. Deliver it in a way that's authentically you. Deliver it in a way that really inspires and motivates people. And number five is identify with your audience. Be personable. Be genuine. Um, be imperfect. Be transparent. And really, bottom line, just be real. That's, that's really the only criteria for that last one. And for all of these, I would put the canopy... I would put the broad kind of sort of barometer or metric is you got to be real. If you're not real, people are going to smell that cooking and your engagement's going to drop faster than a, than a, than a, you know, whatever, uh, an atomic bomb. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything there. I got nothing. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, Dan, you should check it out. Dan, I mean, you would really, oh yeah, Arthur, I, I think the most underutilized platform on the planet right now is LinkedIn. It has been for a long time. Ross and I actually have established ourselves as LinkedIn influencers on there. I mean, Ross, I think even has more followers than I do, believe it or not. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm telling you right now, a, a great way to establish your brand. I know Dan, Dan, you watched the interview with uh, Dale Roberts that I did on LinkedIn. I am so so gung-ho brand evangelist without even being really hired by LinkedIn. I mean, I work for LinkedIn in different capacities, but um, 
unbelievable value on that platform, especially now that they've got native video. If they ever do live streaming, you might not see me on YouTube ever again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love this platform. I love you guys. And I really, really appreciate you guys. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please share this out to somebody who you think would get insane value from this. And as always, on behalf of myself, Professor Nez, and the entire Nez Nation family, I salute you. I appreciate you. I love you. And I can't wait to see you guys next week. Every week, y'all, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. We're bringing the fire. We're bringing the fire to you. We're bringing insane, actionable content that you can implement today, not tomorrow today. You can use this stuff today. Thank you so much. I love you and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys. Have a great, great day.